We always talk macro, but this morning it feels completely different. There's a lot of jitters on the market, especially when you look at the banking sector, European banks. What is going on here? And just quite frankly, very simply, are you concerned? Well, we'll be getting an update today from our regulators with regard to the developments that have taken place both globally in Europe and in Europe uh, over the last number of days and hours. If I look at where we stand at the moment, the uh, exposure that the euro area has to the Silicon Valley Bank uh, Corporation is very limited. We have a very strong uh, regulatory and resolution framework here in Ireland, uh, in Europe I should say, but of course any banking development such as this does prompt uh, questions and of course we'll discuss this today in the Eurogroup. And you just said something important. You said we were going to talk with the regulator. So I assume you have been over the weekend on the phone with the European banking regulator? Well, we'll be getting an update today. We will have both the Commission so and the So they are on the case? Well, the Commission and the ECB, of course, have been monitoring developments that have been taking place. And they will be in a position to discuss this matter with finance ministers today. We do face into this kind of development, as I said, with a limited exposure within the euro area at the moment and with a very strong regulatory and resolution framework. But even with that in place, of course, it's a matter that will receive focus today in the Eurogroup. And of course, when we talk about this exposure, we know there are some operations in Germany. There's also in Denmark. You also mentioned, by the way, uh, in Ireland, you obviously know that economy very well. And we also understand there's some uh, in Poland. Having said that, when you look at the overall banking sector today, you see banks that are unrelated, not even in those jurisdictions, that are majorly down. So what is going on here? Is, is this panic to you? What's going on? Well, it's just a reminder uh, that uh, uh, risk and moments of change can happen very unexpectedly. Uh, we saw that what has now happened in America. Mm -hmm. And with those developments taking place at the moment, you know, I'm not going to comment on equity movements that are happening across the morning. The key message here is that from a European perspective, we are well positioned. We've made such changes in our regulatory framework over the last decade. We can monitor and respond back to developments if needs be. And, and of course, you're not going to comment on individual equity uh, names. We have talked, however, on the show about a number of banks uh, that even went limit down this morning. Uh, but I do wonder, however, what's your message to investors? Not getting specifically into specific banks. I know you're not going to do that. But is your message to investors? maybe cool down, look at the fundamentals. A lot of this seems to be a knee-jerk reaction. Is, is that basically what you want to say? Well, I think there's three messages worth emphasising this morning. Okay, the first okay. one is, is our uh, understanding of what the exposure is due to developments that are taking place in America, our ability to track that. Number two, the confidence that we have in the developments that have taken place in the banking regulatory framework within the euro area. And then thirdly, beyond the investors that you're speaking of there, of course, I'm very much aware of the importance of the tech sector within Europe and how they were supported uh, via this bank. And of course, what we will be doing at EU and at national level is looking at how we can support our tech sector to ensure that they're still in a position to grow and that their prospects uh, are not uh, significantly impacted by the development that has taken place. And you talk about the regulation, and obviously your message, based how I understand it, is that the European regulation is, is, is strong and actually you would say probably better than some other jurisdictions. But when it comes to this tech sector, would you say, again, this proves that maybe there are some deficiencies there? Uh, well, we are, uh, for other reasons, seeing changes taking place in the tech sector all over the world. But I look at where we are in Europe at the moment. While I can see changes that are taking place in the global tech sector that, of course, then affect our presence in Europe, much of the change that's taking place there for me is understood as a, as a moderation in the huge but growth is there too that much happened, risk? happened during the pandemic. As to whether there's too much risk, uh, no, I think our banking system uh, in Europe at the moment understands the risk within European and global tech very well and has the right measures in place to, to, to manage that risk and to be able to deal with it in the time ahead. And, and Mr. Donahue, I have to ask you about the macro, which in, in, in some ways is connected to the story uh, today. We have seen this repricing about uh, the rate expectations from the European Central Bank. is a complete change in narrative. Last week we were talking about the European Central Bank definitely hiking 50 basis points uh, this week. It seems maybe the market, given the jitters, is perhaps having second thoughts. How do you see the situation going? Is this a, a, a situation where you say inflation is an entirely separate
separate issue and the European Central Bank independently, but it has to stay the path. There's no reason to change the narrative. I think the ECB narrative has been very, very clear. Uh, they're uh, fully independent in their functions and decisions they make, uh, but they have emphasised that we all need to play a role in getting inflation down and they're committed to that journey. But they've also said that they will make decisions meeting by meeting in a data and evidence-based way, and that narrative is still very clear. Uh, inflation within the euro area is coming down, but it's still too high, and we have work at fiscal and monetary level to do to get it back to where it needs to be. And, and core inflation is, by the way, very sticky, yet nonetheless, today the market is suggesting something different uh, based on the fallout of uh, everything that we've seen over the past 24 hours. I wonder, is that the wrong message, though? I mean, when you look at it, do you say that these two stories are unrelated? Well, I think uh, uh, undoubtedly changes that are taking place in monetary policy, changes that are taking place in interest rate expectations have fundamental effects everywhere. And of course, this is one of the, the, the background factors in what is now happening at the moment. Uh, but amidst this kind of change, it's why it is so important to be clear about a policy position and narrative with regard to inflation, which is, as the ECB have articulated and then both today and tomorrow you'll see finance ministers here within the European Union again emphasize the message that we all have to play our role in getting inflation down. And just one final question is for no answer do you have full faith in the European banking sector and the European uh, financial uh, sector? I, I have a, a very very high level of confidence in both where we are from a regulatory perspective mm -hmm. and also in changes that have taken place within European banks to respond back to the challenges of a decade ago and to get ready for the challenges that lie ahead. So yes, that confidence is there, but at the same time, we never have any reason to be complacent. We know how fast things can change, and it's why timely, in a timely way today, we'll be able to get an update on where things stand at the moment. But I am confident that we have the ability to manage these kind of risks. And they certainly have over the past 24 hours.